Wow. Okay, we're being recorded. So whoever's going to listen to this, we are grateful that you're here and it's going to be just a short word about um, oh, just say is a testimony to God. Every single day is a testimony to God's glory if we choose to believe in it and give it to him because we should be giving it to him every single day. So in my brief summary of that, I'm just going to remind us, um, you know, I, part of tonight was going to be to celebrate some or to share some testimonies and um, testimonies don't have to be these extravagant life changing things. Um, many of us have had those also that are our great testimonies that God has given us that we're really able to share and it can really make impact or impact people's lives. But then there's the testimonies that's just what the Holy Spirit showed me in the last couple of days are just the praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Those are testimonies. I hope that during the day, I know for me, and it, it's taken, you know, you, you take years to get to wherever, what place you are with God right now. And some of you may be in the younger years of your walk with God. Some of you may be in your elder, wiser years of walking with God. But what, whatever it is, um, you should be starting to thank God all throughout your day for anything and everything. I mean, just, I like, I got my hair done today. Thank you, God, for the hands of this man who did my hair, you know? Thank you, God. I the mean, parking space. What? <laughs> what you I said, oh, that parking space. Yes. Well, said, that was my next example. Yes. Thank you. But we should acknowledge, we we should recognize the do. that he is doing because he wants us to give him praise. Yes. He wants us to recognize that he is the giver of favor. He's the giver of grace. He's the giver of blessings. He's the giver of miracles. Um, and the more that we thank him, the more he will move in it. I promise you that. When I've got to where now, I just am thanking him all the time. I forget what happened this evening that I thanked him for. And I thought, that is the funniest thing I just thanked him for. But it, was <laughs> little, but it should be like that. I mean, maybe your pencil is going to roll off the table and suddenly it doesn't. And you go, thank you, God. My pencil didn't roll off the table. Every one of those thank yous is a testimony to God. Every time that your words glorify God, it's a testimony. And people don't think of it that way, but it's so true. I mean, I have to backtrack a tiny bit because my great aunt who has already passed, who is the one I talk about, my aunt Barbara, oh my gosh, she could raise mountains like crazy. She could heal <laughs> telephone. She was a water walker. Back when she died, that's what they called her, a water walker tongue talker. <laughs> Because she prayed in the spirit a lot and she could walk on water, man. But um, she was one time and she was at this meeting and they were preparing some type of booklets. It was a Christian meeting and they were preparing some kind of pamphlets they were going to distribute. And a pencil started to roll off her table and she said, literally, I saw the angel that put their hand on the side of the table so it didn't roll off. Oh. I mean, <laughs> our favor is so amazing when we are giving thanks to God. And we are giving thanks to God. So I got to tell you what happened with me. And it's just such a funny thing. And please don't think that I was on drugs when this happened because I wasn't. Um, um, but I'm going to start with the first little part. So when this kind of rose up that I knew our son it was going to be a transitional year, January 2022 was the determined year that Dad is no longer going to do certain things, and it's time for you to take flight, you know. And um, but we prepared him, or Joe did, in April. And I had even written it in my journal in April that yes, this was the time Joe was um, going was telling them or did tell them about what was going to be expected at the end of the year and how these changes would affect them. So be prepared. Start getting prepared. That's life. We have to be prepared. When we are walking with God, we still have to be prepared. Yeah. You don't just sit and go, well, if it'll happen, it'll happen. God will open the door. No, you have to get up. You have to be praying into it. 
even if you don't have to do physical actions, you have to do verbal actions. Your confessions are so important. Faith without action is dead. You have got to be um, <sighs> confessing your words and, and using actions that need to follow if God calls you to do something that's an action. But our words, our confession is our greatest action to um, bring faith into our situation. So going back, I knew in April that my husband had done this. So about a week ago, um, Joe had started to talk to them again, telling them this is December, we have till the end, you know, and I knew that there was some strife coming. I knew there was some conflict. I just can feel it. And I just know how, how I know my sons. So anyway, um, about four days ago, I was sitting praying and I just decided every morning, I'm just gonna build my strength up in the Lord. I'm just gonna make the confessions, things that are not as though they are. I'm gonna thank God for my wise boys. I'm gonna thank God for, for sons who have financial understanding. I'm thanking God for their future wives, their future children and their future homes that are going to be perfect for them. Yes. I'm thanking God already for the positive things rather than coming to God and going, help me, help me, help me make, yeah. through, make it through my own anxiety while this is going on. Mm. I did it the opposite. Mm. I think the way that God moves. In. And the more that I'm studying his word and the more that I've been listening to different messages um, so many of them are bringing up that, that scripture, call things that are not as though they are. Speak into them. Now, these are going to be godly things. You're not going to be speaking into things that, oh, I want, I want that red Ferrari that's down the right. street. You know what? I, it's going to be the things that God would want right. are the things that you are going to call into being. God wants us well, so you can, you can speak that. God, thank you for my healed body. Thank you for, um, for my healed lungs. Thank you, God, for that, those healed tumors that are no longer there. Thank you, God, that they are healed in Jesus' name. You, whatever you're doing, if it's in God's will, you can speak it as if it's already done. Faith is believing in the unseen. we got to start programming ourselves to believe that. But oftentimes you have to speak it a lot before you believe it. And so you just speak it. You choose to speak it. You choose to go, I believe in this healing. I believe for my sons to prosper. I believe for them to be able to pay their taxes. I believe, you know, if you're believing for a job, I believe for that great job that God has planned for me. But speak it out loud. It has to be spoken out loud. <clears throat> Romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God so your faith in whatever situation you're believing for has to be heard faith comes by hearing it so you take a word that's from the Bible that's covering your situation and you speak it out loud over and over again and it will grow the faith that's for that thing for that thing. I was talking to, to Gabrielle before class tonight and she's talking about that's what she's been downloading into herself while she's been in isolation, which she said in some ways it sounds like is awesome because you've had this time to really download and get prepared and have peace about this court hearing that's coming up. You have to be speaking it. Speak your promises. Things that are not, call them as if they are. Okay, so I was, this was about a week ago. And so I was starting to not, pre well, I guess in a way prepare because I know how I can be affected with my, with, I'm not claiming it, with anxiety. I'm not saying my anxiety, <laughs> anxiety. When you say my, then you're taking it. Right. Even it. No, but I'm believing that there is an anxiety that I am standing against. And so I'm preparing myself. And so I was praying and all of a sudden the script, the scripture that came into my heart that I know is the Holy Spirit, he just spoke into me and he said, let not your heart be troubled. Do not 
let your heart be troubled. And so when I get a scripture, I immediately go to go to the Bible and find the scripture. Because oftentimes what I've learned for myself anyway, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, is when he gives me a scripture, he wants me to go to that scripture, but then read around it. Oh. See what else he has to say. So oh. important. Sometimes we just hear a scripture and we take that and run with it. When he's going, I got so much more around this, but I couldn't speak it all into to you because oh. it goes back to our remembrance, what we have read. Maybe we haven't read that whole thing. You know, so he's getting, he's getting us there, but then he wants more from us. We've got to do more. So, so I'm thinking to myself, I know it's in John 14 that just came to mind. So I opened my Bible. This is my Bible that I've been using and it's a good size Bible, you know, it's a regular and, and I open it to exactly John 14 verse one. Exactly. Now you guys. That's God. Is <coughs> God. How many pages are in my Bible? I mean, okay, I can just look. Uh, 2,000, almost 2,100 <laughs> pages. And I opened to John 14. That's outrageous. Verse I love it. One. I mean, I know, I know the Bible a little bit. I mean, I, ha I teach it. But I tell you guys, I'm not good about just going, oh, I can just dive down into the Bible and get to wherever. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So this John 14 that he gave me was, that's the confirmation. I love that. Mm -hmm. God said, let not your heart, do not let your heart be troubled. And then he took me straight to it. Is that not a huge confirmation? Yeah. And then he put it in my heart that this is the scripture I'm supposed to give to all of you. Do not let your heart be troubled, troubled but trust in God and trust in me. It was Jesus speaking in the scripture. Do not let your heart be troubled, but trust in God and trust in me. John 14, verse one. Every time I started to think about getting my, letting my heart be troubled, that scripture would now come in because I had meditated on it. I had thought on it. I had received it from God and I chose to believe it. So I'm like, I believe that I have the power within me, who's the Holy Spirit, to not let my heart be troubled. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. He, he means we have the strength to keep our heart from being troubled. So right there, anytime right now that you start to go through something, or if you are going to do something, prepare yourself with that scripture. Have it on hand in your mind. If you have to write it down and post it in places, do not let your heart be troubled. So I just took that and it was like, he was speaking to me right then about our sons. It's like, okay, God, you're, you're preparing me. You're giving me one of your words, one of your promises. And I got it. I'm going to keep it in my forefront. I'm going to keep it in my mind. And then about a week ago or so, I had, had put on my blog and I actually sent out a message to all of you. And I don't you got opportunity to listen to it. It was a little recording that just popped onto your text. And what it had to do with was releasing whatever is concerning you, whatever your worry is, whatever your problem, your trial, your anxiety is focused around, release it, release it. Okay, so what I had put in this blog was about releasing it so that God can take it because if we try to keep hanging on to it, he can't move in and do what he needs to do in it and with it. But if we truly release it to him, just as Abraham did when he had Isaac prepared for that altar, he was going to sacrifice his son. He released his son, trusting that God was going to intercede. God was in, going to interject. He was going to do something to save his son, but he trusted he put him into, into God's hands. So that's what we have to do first. Open our hand. So I want you to start thinking about that. Every time you start to get stressed about whatever it is, or if there's something that you wake up in the middle of the night and think about, physically take your hands and just open them. Just go, I release it, God. I release it to you. And then he, being your caretaker, takes your cares. 
He said, we are to cast all our cares to him. He can take them if we'll release them, but we can't close them back up and bring them back in again. But the awesome thing was that same day that I was sitting reading John 14, the Holy Spirit showed me something that I believe was even more powerful about the release. He said, when you release the thing that's consuming you out of your hand, then I can take your hand. Mm. Then I can feel mm. your hand with my hand. And what he showed me is that it's, I started studying it because it was like, oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit overwhelmed me with this. As I saw it, as I saw my hand go out, letting go and then letting God hold on and me hold on was like, now I can get through whatever I have to get to because I'm holding on to your hand. Yes. So I started doing a study. I went through and yeah. studied. And there's one script, scripture, in fact, is there more than one? Wait, there's one or many that said that with your right hand, take God's hand. With your right hand, take God's hand. And then I started studying and there's many scriptures that says God took your hand with his right hand. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Because when you help someone up, you grab right hand to right hand, or if you're left-handed, left hand to left hand. You don't often grab the opposite hand, a right hand to a left hand. The pull-up isn't doesn't work as well. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's just like when you shake hands. You shake hands opposite. You each shake with your right hand, right? The right hands connecting are the strength that keeps the worry, the concern, the trial out of your life is by staying connected to God's right hand. Right. But the only way you can connect his right hand is by letting go. Mm. So that your hand is empty. Yeah. And be filled with his right hand. Yeah. So powerful, you guys. Yes. You to keep in your mind as we go through this time together. There's a struggle right now, and it is a trial, but Jesus tells us that we are going to have trials and tribulations of many kinds, but fear not because I, Jesus, have overcome them. He's telling us we are going to have them, but through him, we are overcomers. Through him, we can hold on to his hand, and we can even have peace and even joy in the midst of the trial because we're holding on to his hand and trusting for him to take us through it. That's why, again, when it says, consider it pure joy in every single trial, because through that trial, your endurance, your faith, your perseverance will be grown if you're hanging on to his hand. When we hold on to hand, his hand, all the other stuff gets squeezed out of the way. When he squeezes in, all the other junk squeezes out. That's just what we have to keep in our mind. Hold on fast and just keep praising him. Keep speaking those words that bring life into your situations. Make confessions of things that are not as though they are. And um, most importantly, just keep sitting with him. Keep reading his word because the downloads of him, he wants to speak into you. And he can't speak into you if you're not giving him the time. Just like your best friend. If you can't give your best friend the time, your best friend can't encourage you. Your best friend can't be there for you and love you and give you the strength when you need it unless you make the time. So you've got to make the time with the Lord. Sit in his presence. Um, oh, and I have to share one last thing. And then I'm sorry, but this is so amazing because I was talking about... Okay, so God was showing me all these amazing things, John 14, and then he showed me, let go and take his hand. And then two days later, which was yesterday, I was walking my little dog, Bart. Most of you have seen him. He's laying right here. He's sleeping, but here he is. Here he is. Aww. <laughs> Hi, Bart. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, he's just the sweetest, but he has a super bushy tail. We has, he's a long haired wiener dog. So his tail, his hair on his tail is about this long. So when I take him for a walk, sometimes he will get the long pine needle. They're about this long pine needle branches stuck in his tail. And there he gets these specific ones that have little tiny pine cones. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and when he gets them in his tail, literally they wind. I mean, oh, ouch. I have to sit, yeah. And then it, it hurts him and I have to try to weed him out. And then I usually will, you know, clip him. So I took him for a walk yesterday. This is so crazy. And so he gets one of those big branches in his tail and he's dragging it along. <laughs> I, down, I try to help him and I'm like, there's no way until I can get home and sit and, and curl his tail. And so I get to the car. I look down, I, I pick up the, the, the pine branch again, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh, and I tried to pull a little bit and I could tell it was gonna be really painful. So I, I opened the car door, I put my stuff in, I reached down, I picked him up, I set him on the back seat and I looked and the pine branch was gone. <laughs> the pine <laughs> branch yeah. was gone. Thank you, God. Okay, you guys. That is craziness. I mean, that is like, and I'm sorry, I, I don't I don't want you to think I am like losing it or that I'm exaggerating. Because I tell you, these branches, are, they wind. And I literally 30 seconds before tried to get it out and I put him on the seat and it's gone. But not only is it gone, his tail it's like all smooth. It looked like it had been brushed. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I'm serious. God is in the business yep. of doing little tiny things. And if he cares about these little tiny things, he cares so much more about your yep. great, yeah. big, huge, big, ginormous yep. things. He just does. And so I just was like, I can't even believe this, God. <laughs> you had an angel. I mean, you... <laughs> got it out I don't even have to take the time to do it and you just you showed me to me it was just he showed me that he is with us in every single thing you guys mm -hmm. there is nothing he doesn't care about that you care about if you care about it he cares about it even more he cares about it even more he's our caretaker <sighs> so dear lord I just thank you so much for tonight I thank you God that you are our caretaker Lord God, that we can just come to you with anything, everything, anything that's consuming our mind or worrying us or concerning us or um, causing us to fret. And Lord God, we can just release. We can just open our hands and release. And Lord God, in that process, we take hold of your hand and you do magnificent things through and in that trial and within us. And I thank you for this. I thank you to remind these beautiful, sweet women of your sweet words and of your presence and of how much you care more than we could ever imagine. And you want to give us immeasurably more than we could ever ask for. And bless these ladies and protect them. And thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, you guys. Outstanding. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you guys came. <laughs>